Uh, thank you guys so much for joining. We're here with the creative team behind Fed Up, documentary on food in America. We have Katie Cork, we have director Stephanie Sotig, and Lori David, executive producers, and narrator, many hats. <laughs> uh, so this is a documentary about the processed food in America, the, the industrialized system of food production, its effect on us. There have been certainly documentaries on food in the last number of years. This one takes a, a particular look at things. Can you tell me first what made you feel like this was the doc to make now? There's, it's such a trial to get a documentary made. It's going to take you a long time, years. Why this? You want to start with why we made it? Well, I think it's a lot. Uh, this documentary is about a lot more than just sort of the industrial food complex, if you will. It's really focused on childhood obesity mm -hmm. and how we got to this point where so many children are obese today versus, say, 30 or 40 years ago. And as a journalist, I had repeatedly covered stories that had to do with this issue, and I felt that no one had taken a truly comprehensive look at the factors behind this, the historical uh, you know, developments that have occurred and kind of the environment we're living in that have all contributed to this really serious global mm -hmm. epidemic. And so I reached out to Stephanie, and then we both reached out to Lori, and then three, three and a half years <laughs> later, here we, <laughs> here are, we are talking to you at Sundance. <laughs> so. There's a real logic train that you build of, from the 70s uh, through now. You want to give us bullet points just uh, taking us through? Well, I think you can trace the obesity epidemic back to 1977, which is when the government issued its first dietary guidelines. And from there, things sort of took off. Politics t took over. Politics took over. Money took over. <laughs> Money, <laughs> Money yep. took over. And you really, you know, you saw the same sort of lobbying muscle back then as you see today. And it was really eye-opening, I think, to see, you know, this, you know, vintage footage and seeing just how strong the... I was just going to add that what amazed, I think, Katie and I also when Stephanie started doing this incredible exhaustive research, I mean, there were so many things that we didn't know yeah. about, you know, what, what happened and how we got here. Yeah. Um, and I think for people seeing this movie, there, there's so many reasons why we're in this problem, and I think some of them are going to really surprise people. Yeah. Well, you focus on the calories in, calories out model that has been the dietary suggestion, and your discovery is that doesn't really work, at least as it's described. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us something about that? Well, that's just one, one aspect of conventional wisdom that I think we refute, mm -hmm. um, that a calorie is just a calorie, that it's all about energy balance, diet, mm -hmm. and exercise. Mm -hmm. and, and so I think a, a lot of the film does take what people have, have really treated as gospel mm -hmm. and said, wait a minute, that's not really accurate. And it makes sense, because if it were accurate, then we wouldn't have this problem. We yeah. would have solved it a long time ago. But it's much more complicated. And Stephanie and her team did an extraordinary job of taking pretty complex science yeah. and really making it accessible and digestible and, dare so I speak. say, even entertaining. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I, I would just add, and then you should add something to this too, is that why is it that the obesity epidemic parallels the exercise boom? Mm -hmm. You know, that's a really good question that we, I think we answer in, in the movie. Yeah, I think what was most eye-opening to me is sort of two things. Is one, I thought we knew everything there was to know about the food issue at this mm -hmm. point, so I couldn't believe how much we unearthed. I mean, we could easily make a second film. There's mm -hmm. still that much yeah. that got left on the cutting room floor. Yeah. And then also this idea, you know, that the, the fundamental principles that guide us on what to eat, that we discovered that they were wrong, mm -hmm. you know, was yep. shocking. And just, it's really exciting to be able to share that with people. Yeah. I mean, there's some specifics. For example, like sugar gets treated a certain way by the body. A calorie is not just a calorie. How processed food started using sugar for what reason? Well, when we took the fat out of the food, right? And, and when the first dietary guidelines came out, they said fat is the, the villain. Yeah. We took fat out, but it doesn't taste good when you take fat out. So right. we dumped in the sugar. One of the more aggravating things while watching the film are, is the uh, is Department of Agriculture policy, which encouraged all of these things along. Again, it's... you. you there's a logical chain of events mm -hmm. that you can see, mm -hmm. right? The government makes one suggestion, so industry adjusts. And then another suggestion, so then they adjust another way. And our kids are paying the price now. Absolutely. And well, that's, I mean, I think, I think we're, we kind of look at this film as an intervention, mm -hmm. you know? It's, it's, it's time that we really start looking at really the truth of what's happened mm -hmm. and the truth about what we're eating mm -hmm. and hopefully make some serious changes. Yeah. I mean, we have to. 
Can you tell me one story from history that most galled you? For, for me, it is the 1977 Dietary Guidelines. Mm-hmm. I mean, that really set the foundation, which you touched upon, mm-hmm. you know, briefly, is that, you know, there was a very good intention put forth by George McGovern to say, we need to do something about this, mm-hmm. that obesity in 1977 mm-hmm. was going to overtake malnutrition mm-hmm. a, as one of the leading causes mm-hmm. of death. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we could have cut it off then, and we didn't. Mm-hmm. Instead, you know, the power of industry really took over and fundamentally changed the way we eat. Right. And there was going to be a report on sugar as well where... The WHO, the WHO and, and yet that didn't happen. We don't want to give the entire you movie know, away alerts because for a documentary. You know, I know. we <laughs> really want people to go and watch the film, and it's complicated. And I think sometimes there have been nefarious actions that were really weren't that nefarious, but they led to a cascade of events yeah. that, as you said, industry would kind of recalibrate to meet certain needs. So, mm-hmm. I mean, there are so many things that are galling in this movie, and one of the things that we've noticed is after people watch it, they're really angry yeah. about the things that have transpired in the last 30 or 40 mm-hmm. years right. and especially Stephanie very skillfully compares it to the tobacco industry and in many ways we see a repeat of, of some of the justification for tobacco we're seeing that uh, reveal itself when it comes to the food industry mm-hmm. in terms of marketing to children and in terms of uh, the harmful effects that some of these foods actually have on our children and on the whole population which will have dire consequences mm-hmm. to our health care costs for global competitiveness, for military readiness. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's it, it, it's, it's really the tentacles of this issue reach far and wide and really are going to affect every aspect of the way we live. It's been called a national security issue. Yes, yeah. among other things, healthcare issue. I mean, huge, 85% of our healthcare costs have to do with illnesses that are, that are spurred by obesity. Mm-hmm. So, you know, obviously, if, if in 2050, 95, 95% of Americans are gonna be overweight or obese, which is a terrifying statistic. Yeah. If we don't stop the current trajectory, we are, are going to be in deep trouble. It's also cheap calories. There's a income issue with many, a lot of this stuff, access to uh, I think it's a myth that it's, that it's cheaper. And I think it's something yeah. that we all thought as well going in. Mm-hmm. And, and I think if you, we can ease, we show you in the, at the end of the film just how much more food you can get when you have real food mm-hmm. versus this processed food. It's a myth the food industry wants you to believe that mm-hmm. it's cheaper and more convenient. And it's a myth that cooking is hard <laughs> and that it takes too much time. I mean, that's a myth too. That's a marketing tactic, right? Mm-hmm. They convinced women that uh, they don't want to be in the kitchen anymore. <laughs> right. So, you know. I enjoy every, cooking. <laughs> I, hey, this is one of the joys of life is to actually stop for dinner, right? right? So cooking real food is a, is a big takeaway because if you don't make it yourself, you don't know what's in it. And just to add to that point, mm-hmm. we're all working moms. So I yep. think, you know, we're walking the walk too. And, and I actually thought cooking was harder too. And there's just, you know, a few things you can do that make it easier, I th- mm-hmm. you know? And I actually, I actually learned those from your book. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Shameless plug, but true. You know, just a little prep goes a long way. Yeah. And I think education is the bottom line. I think, yes, the, I, I think... You know, there's not one single solution, but I think there are many solutions that are not that difficult, that when put together in one big pot Mm -hmm. can make a serious dent Mm -hmm. in this crisis. And if we don't, if we don't act now, we are going to really rue the day that we allowed kids to be manipulated by the food industry, that we allowed them to to basically come up with the ingredients that make us addictive to mm-hmm. certain products mm-hmm. that we didn't demand better for ourselves and for our children. And um, I think that there's a whole panoply of ways that you can solve this problem. And I think after watching the film and seeing some of the things that you can do, one of our experts says it's it, the solution is local. It's as local as what you put on your fork. Yeah. So there are many ways that I think we can deal with this problem. The last thing we want to do is to have people say, oh, it's too complicated, it's too big, I won't be able to make a difference, but that really isn't true. What was the most, in your reporting, exciting single effort that you see? I wouldn't say that there's one that's the most, but one thing that really surprised me that I thought was great is that there um, is a woman, Kate Adamick, who's going around and she's cooking school lunches from scratch Mm -hmm. with the exact same budget that we allow for the the processed and fast food that's in school now. From scratch, using the existing equipment. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you only have a microwave, she will show you how to cook from Mm -hmm. scratch Mm -hmm. on that budget. Mm -hmm. And I think that's revolutionary. Because 50%, more than 50% of school districts serving junk food, that's just completely unacceptable. And even if they have a healthy alternative, 
You know, very few kids are opting for that healthier alternative. Sure. One of the stunning sound bites in the documentary is one expert says schools have been turned into 7-Eleven, 7-11s with books. Right. And, you know, we have to do better for our kids. There are other people who are serving, speaking of food deserts, try, the underserved community by trying to ship in fresh mm -hmm. produce and trying to make those items available mm -hmm. for for less affluent families. Mm -hmm. And that is a critical problem. But I think also there are some ways to, to eat well inexpensively. Mm -hmm. And we just, people don't know about those ways. So, you know, we could have done three documentaries on sure. this, but we really hope that to continue to make this a real movement mm -hmm. and to continue to educate people and to help them change their lives and get involved so we can all together change change things. Well, it's really interesting and it's well laid out. Um, the information is digestible and especially even the science stuff, you know, you have wonderful graphics that, uh, that, that, that make it fun. Yeah, the graphics team I thought did an extraordinary job. Yeah. They're fun to watch, the graphics, <laughs> yeah. and important. So, mm -hmm. Well, thank you guys so much for coming, and good luck with thank the film you. Sundance, Thanks. and appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Rob. Fed up. Sundance.